Are you looking to enhance your photos with Luminar FX? Are you looking for that secret sauce that can really improve your photos? Look no further. I'm James Dempsey from PhotoWorkout.com, and in this video, I'm going to give you 10 useful Luminar FX, which will instantly enhance your shots. So let's get straight into it. So first of all, number one, with the light sliders, you can recover highlights and shadows to give your images that detailed look that you really generally want. So if you want to create just stunning edit effects in Luminar, I recommend you really do start with exposure. So Luminar offers two excellent sliders for bringing back detail into your photos, both located under the light tool here, just in the essentials panel. The highlight slider right here is excellent for situations when you have two bright highlights such as when you're working with a bright sky all you have to do is just drag down the highlight slider and you'll be able to bring out a lot more detail uh, so check out on this image here where I have a bright sky in the background there um, and so I come in, I just bring down the highlight slider. See immediate recovery of detail in the background. Uh, and you don't just have to use the highlight slider to recover lost detail. It can also be used to enhance detail that's already present, but just doesn't stand out. For instance, the detail on these, these light bulbs here. I like it just really helps bring those out. Now you can generally use the shadow slider here in a similar but opposite way. So to boost the shadows, either to bring back detail into the scene or to make shadow detail just more apparent in general. So coming down to this picture, boost the shadow slider up a bit, and you really get a pop in those, those darker areas of the photo. And while these adjustments may seem very basic, they're an extremely important early step in the editing process. They give you a great foundation for further editing in Luminar, and they just make your photos look, well, plain better. So the next uh, fact is to add contrast with the Smart Contrast slider, or if you're feeling more adventurous with the Curves uh, tools there. So this is another very basic adjustment, but one that's pretty much indispensable. You just want to add some contrast. Contrast will take your, your photos from something kind of boring. Um, I'll use this as, as an example. Uh, it will take them from something kind of boring to something just really, really pops. I'll give you a look. So here we have no contrast here, actually negative contrast. Just not that interesting, but then you got that. Just really brings out uh, those different tones and also even the, the different colors. Uh, just helps them really pop. And so you can really boost the contrast in a few simple ways. The first is just using the smart contrast slider, which is basically just sort of an overall global contrast adjustment but it's going to be a little more uh, uh, careful in terms of how in terms of how adjust the contrast, um, and so you can just raise the contrast here until you get something you like. For this image, I, I do like the more contrasty look, so I'd, I'd bring it up uh, somewhat high. Um, and the second way to boost contrast is with the curves uh, tool down here. So it's under advanced settings. Uh, in this light, uh, in the light tool. Uh, so here, what you're going to want to do is just add a few points by clicking here on the curve. And then you can create uh, an S shape, a very slight S shape by bringing that up. Bring this down. And the contrast is increased. Um, in this particular case, you're you, it appears very contrasty because I left this up. But if I bring that back down, you end up with a, a similar effect, though it's more customizable 
when you're working with curves. Now the next tip is to crush the blacks for a contrast heavy cinematic type look. So I talked about the value of adding some contrast to your photos, but if you want to get really advanced, you can selectively add contrast just to the darker parts of the photo. Now, I recommend doing this with the curves option here. Um, so you start by adding the points to the curve, which I've already done. Um, but then, let me just straighten this out. Once you have your points, then you're actually going to want to bring down this, this bottom point here uh, to just really give some oomph to the shadows. Um, and it, it will take the dark parts of the photo and make them even darker. Here, let me, let me see if I can show you on here. Because this is a photo that already has very dark parts. Um, so... Just give it a moment to load. So here we go. I'm going to add the points. Bring this down. And it, it, it gives this really nice contrasty cinematic look, uh, which brings me to the next tip, which is to lift the black point for a cool cinematic faded look. So the black point refers to the, the point at which your photo loses all detail in the shadows. If you want to create a cool effect, you can actually lift this black point. So here's here's how it works. So first you have you have curves. Uh, then here you can have this brought down a bit, though you don't have to. But then you just lift this this edge here, and it gives like this faded look. Uh, that's really nice, and it's it's common to find it in, in the movies and in TV shows. And now the next tip, the next great effect in Luminar is to just bump up the saturation or vibrance a little bit for enhanced colors. You see, one of the most common mistakes in post-processing is to actually overuse the saturation slider. But if you use the saturation slider carefully, Saturation can be the difference between a boring photo and a photo that just really pops and really stands out. So for instance, uh, um, with this photo here, uh, I might be interested in just bringing out some of these purples as well as even the greens and yellows in the background. So I'd come here to color, and there's just the saturation slider. And it's actually already boosted off a bit, but you can boost it a little bit more. Then those colors just really pop. Um, and you can see like without saturation, with saturation, it's just a nice, uh, a subtle touch that, that can just make a big difference. Um, also note you can use the Vibrant Slider, which is less heavy handed, um, and is generally going to give you a more subtle effect uh, it's not going to impact the areas that are already fairly saturated, and it also tends to avoid skin tones. It avoids those warmer tones. Um, and so, you know, you can experiment with both of them. They can both give you good results. Next, I recommend that you actually use advanced color sliders to, to just really bring out and deepen areas of your photos. Now, to get to those advanced color sliders, just go to advanced settings here under the colors tool. And then here you just have this nice panel. Um, and what you can do is you can select different colors here uh, and then adjust the hue, the saturation, and then the luminance or the, the lightness of those values. Um, uh, so for instance, you can come here and say, well, I want to uh, shift the reds towards an orange. Do that. You could say, I want to shift the greens back here to more of a blue color. Now, this can be a bad effect when it's overused, but it's very nice when you're just trying to simplify the color palette of an image. So you have too many colors that it's a bit complex. You just sort of shift them towards one another. You can also bring out colors selectively. For instance, you could 
bring out um, the greens in this photo, or the purples in this photo. Uh, I mean, you could desaturate some of the colors you were maybe less interested in. And really, selective color adjustment tools like this can be a real game changer for any photographer. They're just really powerful. And speaking of powerful effects, the next tip I have is to add a vignette to push focus to the main subject. So you just come down here to the vignette tool. And what the vignette does is it just darkens the corners around the edges of your image. So here we're lightening and then darkening. So you can have a lighter vignette to darken. And this is just really overdone. But when done very subtly, it can push your attention to the main subject, um, but, but, it, but without standing out so much as to look unnatural or fake. And it's a great way to add finishing, to add this sort of finishing touch to your images. Um, because the vignette serves to focus the viewer on your main subject so that they're compelled to return to the subject over and over again. They're pushed into the frame. I mean, really, the best vignettes are often difficult to actually see. Instead, they do their work sort of subconsciously. Um, so here, you can darken the vignette, lighten the vignette. You can also change the size here. Let me do it extreme just so I can show. Make it bigger, smaller in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, its general size. Um, and you can also choose the subject. So here, you click and it changes the position of the vignette. So that's pretty useful when you're when you're dealing with a subject that's not really centered and you want to still bring attention to that subject. Now let me dial this back. Um, and then another great tip for for really taking your photos on, to a more professional level is dodging and burning for added three dimensionality. And really, if I had to show beginner photographers one effect that can take your photos from mediocre to incredible in just like 15 minutes or so, it'd probably be dodging and burning. The effect is really simple. You're just painting brightness, or also known as dodging, or painting darkness or burning onto your photo. But it can make this huge difference because it's as if you're shading you're, you're creating this three-dimensionality in your images that it's just sort of hard to achieve otherwise, and it adds this significant depth to your photos, um, it just making them really stand out. Uh, and you can also use the dodge tool on your main subject to just lighten up areas you want to focus on, and then use the burn tool to, to just dial your background back, make sure it avoids attention. Now to access the dodging and burning tools in Luminar, you just head over to the Pro tab here. Then you're just gonna click on Dodge and Burn. Then you can just tap Start Painting, and then it will give you your brushes up here, the lighten, the darken, and you go ahead and you do your dodging and burning work. And just make sure you work with the brush on a very low strength here. Um, maybe around 10% or so, and then slowly build up your brush strokes rather than starting out strong so you get a more realistic effect overall. Uh, and now, another effect that's just really sort of central to Luminar and what Luminar does is one you've maybe heard of, the AI Sky Replacement Tool. And this is really quite astonishing. Here, let me pull out that photo while I talk. Um, it's far from perfect, but it allows you to just quickly swap out skies um, and just take a photo with kind of a boring sky, like the, the one I have here, and just turn it into something much more interesting and dramatic. So let me show you. So here you come to the, the Creative uh, tab, the AI Sky Replacement, and then you just choose the sky. Um, note that you can add your own skies the bottom here. Then you just come and you say, okay, I want to create a dramatic sunset. And then we'll take a moment, but then it will do that for you. And you can, you can play around with different options. You can have bright blue sky if you wanted to. Uh, and it does a surprisingly good job of just coming in and giving you nice looking 
fairly realistic sky. They're not always realistic. Um, oh, and you can relight the scene to make it fit more with the sky. Um, now, it does a great job with basic scenes. Um, where there's a lot of contrast between the sky and the subject. But when you have a scene, the one I was, like this, I was showing you earlier, um, it's just going to, to struggle because there's not contrast at all between the top of these lights and then the background. So I'll show you. Uh, if you go in um, and you try and give it a cool sky look, um, it's just going to look bad. So here, I put in a starry night sky. You can see these just blend in, just looks terrible. So just be careful when you're using the AI sky replacement tool. It can be powerful, but it also can just not really work. Um, and then finally, I recommend using the split toning tool for a nice final touch. You see, split toning allows you to push colors into the highlights and separately colors into the shadow. It's a common effect in portrait and fashion photography, and movies often use split toning as well, in some form anyways. You can use it in all sorts of situations and come away with unique results. So let me show you. You just go to the Pro tab, then you're going to click on split toning here. And uh, uh, when you're working with, with split toning, you just get to you decide on um, the hue that you want to put in your highlights. And you just pull up the saturation. The hue you want to put in your shadows. And you pull up saturation there as well. Um, so here, uh, I, I might want to put warm color into the highlights because generally um, warm highlights and cool shadows just looks really good. And I might come into the shadows, boost that a little bit. But the truth is that while this is a cool effect, it's not going to be something that you can apply consistently to every photo. You're going to have to experiment with different options, with different colors. Um, but in the end, it can really add that extra sort of uh, uh, a nice zest to a photo. And so next time you edit in Luminar, try a few of these effects. You don't have to use them all, but just take a few ideas from this video and just see what uh, what you end up with. And my guess is you'll, you'll really like the result. So thanks so much for watching. And that's all for now. And don't forget to subscribe if you're interested in other photo editing tips and tutorials. Thanks so much.